the Democrat capital of the United States. Is that where Washington, D.C. is headed? It is if the Democrats get their way. Today, the House votes on what's called D.C. statehood. So what can Republicans do to block, the, to block this power grab? And why does so much hinge on the Senate filibuster? Janet Browder explains. Making Washington, D.C. the nation's 51st state is a top legislative priority for Democrats. H.R. 1 is expected to pass the House, but getting it by the Senate could prove much tougher. We're Americans. If, if, if we fulfill all obligations of citizenship, we should be treated equally. And that's what statehood does. This coming from one lifelong D.C. resident, and Democrats agree, including the White House this week throwing its full support behind H.R. 51. In a statement from the Office of Management and Budget, Congress should provide for a swift and orderly transition to statehood. The same bill passed the House last year, but fell flat in the Republican-controlled Senate. Even with Democrats now in charge, the same thing will likely happen because of the 60-vote filibuster. And so I think you're going to hear a lot of talk within the next several weeks about whether or not uh, the Democratic members have the votes to pass this bill, and if they can get to 50 votes, uh, whether they will be willing or able uh, to abolish or alter the filibuster in order to pass this legislation. Zach Smith with the Heritage Foundation testified in last month's hearing. He tells CBN News there's a constitutional reason the nation's capital is not a state. The framers envisioned that the seat of the federal government would be independent from any state. And there were really two reasons behind that. They wanted to ensure that the federal government could have physical control over the Capitol sufficiently to secure the um, officials who work there, the buildings, uh, that are there to house government operations. And they also wanted to make sure that no one state had an outsized influence on the operations of the federal government. Republicans see the effort as a power grab. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. It's unconstitutional. It's no different than packing the Supreme Court. The only reason the Democrats are doing it is trying to get more electoral votes and more senators and why they're doing it when they are because they know they're going to lose the majority. Um, it was never created or should be a state. Uh, if there's anything it should do, it should go back to Maryland. Since D.C. consistently supports the Democratic nominee for president, statehood would tilt the balance of power in the Senate to Democrats. So much hinges on the Senate filibuster for this bill and others. Right now, though, not enough senators support getting rid of it. So 60 votes it is. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. You have to go back to history and realize that uh, Hamilton and Jefferson were talking together, and the thought was the capital should be in Philadelphia. And yet the southern states said that's too far away for us. And the northern states said we don't want to go down into Georgia or Alabama or North Carolina. And so they, they had a compromise between Alexander Hamilton and um, Thomas Jefferson on where to put it. And it was called the District of Columbia, and Washington was going to be a city as the capital of our nation in the district, but it was never intended to be a state. And this is a clear power grab by the Democrats to overturn the history and the Constitution of the United States. Well, CBN chief political analyst David Brody is here to talk about the Democrat agenda. David? <clears throat> D.C. statehood is just one part of a massive power grab by Democrats. They want to get rid of the Senate filibuster, pack the Supreme Court, federalize elections. What are the chances that they'll make this happen? Well, let's start with this, uh, Pat. Uh, it's all about the Senate filibuster. You mentioned the Senate filibuster. Look, if Democrats can change the filibuster rule, the legislative filibuster rule, then everything else we're talking about, D.C. statehood, this federal elections, H.R. 1 we've heard so much about, the Equality Act, gun control, packing the Supreme Court, all of it becomes reality but they've got to change the legislative filibuster first because that takes the threshold down from 60 votes to only 50 votes, and that's what Democrats want to do. And let's be clear, Pat, that is exactly what Democrats want to go do. The only thing stopping them are two people, really one, 
Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia, he's the one to watch. He's the only one to watch. Maybe Kirsten Cinema from Arizona. Uh, those are the two that have had issues with the filibuster. But I can tell you from some of my sources on Capitol Hill, they are indeed being pushed by Democrats. There is a full-on campaign to get Manchin and Cinema to change their view on the legislative filibuster, saying now is the time to get all of this done. And the question is, why is now is the time? Well, there's a lot of reasons for it. But let's be honest, uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy, in that interview that you saw with Jenna that uh, was in her piece, I did talk to Kevin McCarthy yesterday, and he believes on a scale of 1 to 10 that Republicans will take back the House in 2022. So Democrats know that they got to get it done now or they're going to be in big trouble. Uh, is there a chance, you know, it looks like the people are really disgusted with Washington. It, it, are there some vulnerable senators? So the, the, and not only will the House switch, but maybe the Senate might switch? Yeah, well, for sure. As a matter of fact, the political prognosticators, people that do this for a living, not just the pollsters, forget the pollsters. I think we're all done with the pollsters, Pat. Uh, but people that actually track these races uh, down on the ground say that the Senate clearly is up for grabs just like the House. And so uh, everything's up for grabs in 2022. And I think Democrats, the reason you're seeing so much of this liberal push uh, by Biden and the progressives is not just because of 2022, uh, but, you know, they remember that House they're going to go back to Merrick Garland. Remember, Merrick Garland wasn't uh, brought up as a Supreme Court nominee. Then Amy Coney Barrett was rushed, according to the Democrats, in in just a few weeks or three or four weeks. So they're frustrated. They're angry at Republicans. They're angry at Mitch McConnell for holding up legislation when he controlled, when Republicans control the Senate and they control the House. And this is payback. Uh, the problem with payback is payback uh, begats payback, and it, we're, we go down a very, very dangerous road in America if it happens. Well, they, they were the last question, how does all this square with the president's pledge to seek unity? Yeah, well, listen, uh, I'm not a Washington Post fact checker, but if I was, I'd give it four Pinocchios. I mean, are you kidding me? What unity exactly? There's been no unity. They did budget reconciliation on the trillion dollar stimulus bill. They're about to do budget reconciliation on the Jobs Act coming up. Kevin McCarthy, like I said, I spoke to him. I want to play a quick little soundbite of Kevin McCarthy saying that he hasn't even talked to Joe Biden yet. Have a look, Pat. I've never spoken to President Biden since he's become president. So I, I could not judge, not one time, nor has he called me, nor have I spoken to him. Now, I request meetings to talk about the border more than a month ago and the crisis that he created. Um, but unfortunately, when the president talks about bipartisanship, that isn't what he means. Pat, on unity, it's all been words, no action whatsoever from Biden. Thank you, David.